Hello everyone, and if you're watching this, then you or somebody you love has a thyroid problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk today about a little bit of an introduction to metabolic testing, functional nutrition and neurology for thyroid conditions. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Dr. Aubrey Tager. I am a chiropractor. Uh, I have been practicing for over 14 years. I am currently a board eligible chiropractic neurologist and I hold a postdoctoral certificate from the American Functional Neurology Institute. As well, I have studied under Dr. Michael Johnson, author of the book, What Do You Do When the Medications Don't Work? As well as many other books recently written. I am board certified in integrative medicine by the American Board of Integrative Medicine, and I practice in South Burlington, Vermont. Now, all chronic conditions have some common threads. When we look at things like thyroid conditions, we see things like insulin resistance, fibromyalgia, vertigo, sciatica, chronic fatigue syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis. All of these things are gonna have some similar problems. What we're gonna see is we're gonna see some oxygen deficit. Very likely we're gonna have neurological misfiring and some metabolic imbalances. Now in those metabolic imbalances, what we start to see are things like blood dysregulation. We might have things like cortisol imbalances or some hormone imbalances as well. Now all cases are a combination of neurologic treatment and metabolic treatment in our office. We combine the two together. So we want to make sure that we're not just taking care of the metabolic portion or the neurologic portion, but that we're actually melding the two together. When we look at thyroid symptoms, I have listed here some of the most common symptoms that people present with. So what we have is fatigue, an increase in weight gain, even if you're having a low calorie diet, that can be a factor. Morning headaches that wear off as the day progresses, depression, constipation, poor circulation, catching colds or other viruses. Wounds healing slowly. Things just are not working properly. Requiring excessive amounts of sleep. You're going to bed and you really can't feel like you're getting a good, good night's sleep, even though you might have been in bed for seven or eight hours. Itchy or dry skin. Dry or brittle hair. Edema, especially facial. So if you're having a lot of puffiness around the face. And also a loss of the outside part of the eyebrows. Now, what does the thyroid do? Well, the thyroid supports bone metabolism. It supports your immune system, your brain and nervous system, your endocrine system, your gastrointestinal function, liver and gallbladder, growth and sex hormones, fat burning, insulin and glucose metabolism, healthy cholesterol levels, and proper stomach acid. One thing that most people don't realize is that every single cell in your body has thyroid receptors. So the thyroid is an extremely important thing to be focusing on and it's very, very important that we have all of these working together. Now your thyroid is gonna cross talk or communicate with other parts of your body. It's gonna talk with your immune system, with your gut, because 80% of your immune system is in your gut. Your thyroid is going to communicate with your brain and vice versa. And your thyroid is going to communicate with your endocrine system. All of these things, one are going to affect the other. So it's very important that we don't have any kind of dysregulation in between them. Here we have a diagram of the actual breakdown. So what we have here is the hypothalamus in the brain, which releases TRH. That's going to go to the pituitary gland. And when that gets to the pituitary gland, what we start to see here is how everything gets shifted off. It's not just revolving around the thyroid, but we have the incorporation of growth hormone, which helps in tissue repair, the thyroid gland, which then makes T4 and T3, ACTH in the adrenal glands. Very important. We've got to make sure that we're addressing the adrenal glands and also down into the ovaries and testes for the menstrual cycle. Now, some thyroid basics. As we saw in the last slide, 
The hypothalamus is going to send signals to the pituitary gland via a product called TRH. What happens then is the pituitary gland sends a signal to the thyroid with TSH. TSH, if we could go and look back, what we see here is TSH acting like a taxi cab going down and bringing TBG so it can convert T4 to T3, the active form of thyroid hormone in the liver, gut, and other tissues. So 60% of this conversion occurs in the liver. So like we were just saying, 60% of T4 is converted to T3. Poor liver function will cause poor T4 to T3 conversion. So it's very important that when we're dealing with things like the thyroid, that we're not just looking at the thyroid gland itself, but that we're looking at everything else that's supporting it, especially the liver, which is an extremely important structure here. 20% is going to be sent to the gut to be converted, and if we have poor gut flora, what that's going to do is that's going to cause poor conversion of T3 to T4. A small percentage of T4 goes to reverse T3, and 20% of T4 is sent to the peripheral cells for conversion of T3 using 5 diidio anazine enzyme. Now, have you gone to your family doctor or to your endocrinologist or internal medicine specialist and been told that the lab tests are normal. Well, lab ranges are inaccurate. They use a bell curve. So what that means is what they're doing is they're looking at all of the people that are coming into that lab, which obviously if they're coming in, they're not well, and they're looking at these ranges of sick people. Not well people, sick people. Functional lab values are going to be more sensitive to reveal problems. Now, this is why your lab tests are normal, but you feel sick. If we have an abnormal low value, in these areas you'll find lab findings that the doctors say are normal, and then we have abnormally high values. Functional ranges are closer, they're tighter. So if we look at something, for instance, like blood sugar levels, normal blood sugar level generally is between, thought to be between 80 and 120. Well, that's a very large range. So if you're up there at about 120, 122, then you're extremely pre-diabetic, and there are some major problems going on. So if your doctor is waiting for you to become diabetic so he can give you medication because there's nothing else he can do, we know that there's an issue there. We want to look at more functional ranges. We want that blood sugar level to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 90 to 105. Because if it's lower than that, then we know that you're going to have some hypoglycemic tendencies, and if it's higher than that, then we know that we're already doing damage to the peripheral nerves, and that's going to lead to long-term problems, not with, just with peripheral neuropathy and the hands and the feet, but it's also going to lead to problems in your organs, your kidneys, your liver. You don't want to have that, so you want to make sure that you're closer in this tight functional lab range. Now, were all of your tests normal? Well, here's some right here of the typical tests that we see, glucose, TSH, cholesterol, triglycerides, and hemoglobin. And if you come into my office, then we'll give you a chart like this so you can actually take home and compare this with all of your lab tests. Now, a true thyroid function test, TSH, this is what's conventionally ordered. So your doctor, if you go in and you say, I have thyroid problems, more than likely he's not going to order what's called a thyroid panel. The most popular thing, and that I see and my colleagues see in our practices on a day-to-day -day basis, are the ordering of TSH. Now, what about all the other ones? What about total T4, thyroxine, or FT1, FT4? These are all other things that have to be looked at. T3 uptake, how much of this is taken up? F free T3, reverse T3, TPO and TBG, TSH antibodies, TBG levels. You will not be able to tell if you have a problem such as Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, if you don't do any of these other tests. These tests are all going to be found in a complete, thorough thyroid panel, and those must be ordered by your doctor. Now, typical thyroid tests, like we said, you have TSH and T4. So, how can you manage health without all the information? If you're going to burning out, be burning out your thyroid with hormone replacement, 
you're using a 50 year old model. This is a long term problem. This has been going on for a long period of time that people have been managing like this. So in order to manage your health, you need to look at the causes of the problems, not just the symptoms. So let's take a look at Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Some people might have heard this term before. If you haven't, then we'll explain it a little bit. These are not typical thyroid problems. Your immune system in, thyro in Hashimoto's thyroiditis is mistakenly attacking the TPO or TPG um, antibodies. This is, it means that your body is attacking itself. It's looking at, the, at, these, uh, at, at these products as foreign invaders, and it wants to go and eliminate them from your body. But that's an autoimmune response, and an autoimmune immune response is going to cause a lot of inflammation throughout your body. There is an imbalance in your immune system that needs to be addressed, and you have to do proper testing. So why would your immune system do this? Well, first we have dysregulation. We can be looking at things like chronic inflammation from bad blood sugar levels, poor adrenal glands, hormone imbalances, like we looked at at the slides before. If those hormones are not there, if they're not being produced properly, not just by the thyroid, but by the other glands as well, um, and by the other organs, like in the liver, then you're going to have problems. You may have neurological imbalances. What else can be causing this? Well, an active antigen, chronic infection a bacterial or a viral or even mold, a parasite in your gut. You might have things living inside of your gut in different large intestines, small intestine. You might have a liver fluke. You might have gluten sensitivity or environmental toxins. There might even be undigested food. And if that food goes undigested and sits there in your stomach, it will rot and then leak out. And that's how we have leaky gut syndrome. So what are the treatments for things like Hashimoto's and Graves? Well, first and foremost, what we have to do is we have to remove the antigen or the cause of dysregulation. We have to modulate the immune system. So some of the things that we can use are emulsified vitamin D, glutathione, which is the largest antioxidant in your body, most abundant in your body. It fights off free radicals. Fish oils, natural anti-inflammatories. Remove stimulants to the dominant half of the immune system and support the non-dominant half. So if one part of it is not working well, we've got to support that and make sure that it is. I use things like herbal compounds from, a from Apex Energetics and PRL Labs, which uses live source supplements. These are very, very good products without excipients. There's no binders or fillers. There are six major thyroid patterns. First, we have primary hypothyroidism. Then we have hypothyroidism secondary to hypopituitary, thyroid underconversion, thyroid overconversion, decreased TBG, TBG elevation from contraceptives, and thyroid resistance. Now, in primary hypothyroidism, the thyroid gland gets lazy, and the pituitary gland tries to kick it in its pants by pumping out extra TSH. So this means that you have high TSH levels. Only pattern of this six may need HRT, Hashimoto's. We need nutritional support if we, if we catch it early, and then we can change the problem. So looking at things like thyroid gland, ashwagandha, vitamin A, D, selenium, and zinc, we have to be able to support the conversion of T4 to T3. So, hypothyroidism is secondary to pituitary hypofunction. The pituitary gets lazy or low, the TSH level is below what the number is, is 1.8. And then we start to see chronic stress fatigues the gland. Hormone pills, including Synthroid, are used. Creams with estrogen. Um, we see fluctuating insulin and glucose levels because, the, because of adrenal gland fatigue. Now, some of the nutritional support that we might use here are things like thyroid and pituitary gland, sage leaf extract, L-arginine, magnesium, zinc, and manganese. The thyroid underconversion. So in this circumstance, the gland is making enough T4, but there is a decrease in conversion from T4 to T3. Why is this happening? Well, it's not just because of the thyroid gland, 
but chronic adrenal stress gives rise to increased cortisol. So this cortisol that's being released from your adrenal glands is toxic to your brain. Your brain doesn't want this stuff there. And when we have that, we start to have chronic inflammation and chronic infection. This is going to lead to neurological disorders. When we have these problems, like I said, with cortisol being toxic to the brain, this is going to cause things like imbalances. You might not be able to walk properly. You might have problems um, with coordination. All of these things are going to be affected because parts of the brain that controls balance, coordination, controls your postural back muscles, the cerebellum, this is not functioning properly because of the toxicity from cortisol. Now, some of the nutritional support we see here is glutathione cream. We might see things like compounds to support the conversion of T4 to T3. And this is really going to help under conversion. Now, when we see thyroid overconversion and decreased TBG, we see too much of the active form of T3 made. And then this becomes overwhelming to the cells when there's or too little TBG, which means that there is too much free T3. Why? The number one cause is insulin resistance, especially in women. The cells are not listening to the insulin, and more insulin gets secreted. Well, if this increases, what ends up happening then is this increases testosterone levels in females, resulting in too much T3 and too, too little TBG. Thyroid binding globulin, TBG elevation. If you have too much of this thyroid binding globulin, there's going to be too little free T3. Why? This could be because you're taking oral contraceptives or estrogen replacement therapy, which causes an increase in the estrogen. When you have an increase in estrogen, it leads to an increase in TBG. So we want to make sure that we go through nutritional support with things like beetroot, betaine hydrochloric acid, very, very important. Okay? Hydrochloric acid, we see tons of this with what we call, or a lack of hydrochloric acid in hypochlorhydria. And you'll see another video of mine where I describe this in detail. But when you have hypochlorhydria and you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, your body is not able to break down all the food that's in there. Now, if the food is not broken down, then what ends up happening is you're not able to absorb all of the vitamins and minerals that you're actually getting into your body. So if you have hypochlorhydria, if you're not getting enough of this betaine hydrochloric acid, then you're not going to be able to break down or convert all of the vitamins and supplements that you are taking. Thyroid resistance. The pituitary and thyroid glands are fine, and so the hormone levels are level. However, the hormones aren't getting into the cell. Why would that be? Why would you have thyroid resistance? Well, chronic response, uh, stress to the, excuse me, stress to the adrenal, adrenal glands, which produce too much cortisol and causes the cells to be resistant to the thyroid hormone. So if those adrenal glands are not working properly and it's releasing too much cortisol, not only is this going to be toxic to the brain, but it's also going to cause the thyroid receptors for those hormones to be resistant, to not allow them to come in. Now, thyroid dysfunction is a sign of metabolic dysfunction. So proper testing is crucial. What, crucial. what we want to do is we want to do a complete metabolic panel. This includes a complete thyroid profile, including thyroid antibodies, vitamin D levels, anemia, kidney function, immune panels, an adrenal stress test. This is called the Adrenal Stress Index. This is done with a saliva test. It's a, it looks at 24-hour cortisol levels. And then we also want to look at things like food sensitivity issues. So we're going to look at things like gluten, soy, dairy, yeast. All of these are causing inflammation in the body. And then we can do a stool microbial ecology profile when we look, where we look at gut infections, parasites, and yeast. So let's take a look at the triad of Hashimoto's. What we see with Hashimoto's are antibodies to the TPO or TBG. We see gluten sensitivity and antibodies to intrinsic factor, which leads to lower B12, leading to pernicious anemia. So what's next? 
We start to have problems in the pancreas, the myelin sheath, leading to peripheral neuropathy. These are the coverings, the myelin sheath of the nerve, and problems in the cerebellum like I talked about before. So the cerebellum is going to control balance, coordination, and all of, all of your postural back muscles. So what makes our office different from every other doctor's office that you've been to? Well, we treat our patients neurologically and metabolically. Now I'm here to tell you that in my office, we leave no stone left unturned. We're going to find the exact cause of your condition, one way or another. What is functional medicine? Well, functional medicine is based on lab findings and other tests. And what we also see is nutritional products are dispensed to support biochemical pathways for healing. So we're going to be looking at things in the gut. We're going to be looking at the thyroid, the adrenals. We're going to be looking at your liver. We're going to be looking at anemia, sugar regulation or dysregulation, and autoimmune regulation. Now, a comprehensive neurological and metabolic workup is done in my office. Some of the neurological tests, we're going to look at blood pressure, tissue oxygen saturation rate, heart rate and rhythm, and when I say here R and L, that's right and left blood pressure. We always do things bilaterally, or both sides. If we don't, then how would we know if there's a problem on the other side? I have never come across a textbook, a medical textbook, that doesn't tell you to do blood pressure on both sides. Every textbook will tell you that. Next time you go to your family doctor, ask them if you can do the blood pressure on both sides. Saliva pH. If your pH is not in the tight realm of 6.4 to 7, if you're down around 5, then that means that you're extremely acidic. Acidic environments are breeding grounds for problems. Things like cancer, heart problems, all of these are going to breed in an acidic environment. You want to make sure that you're neutral or alkaline, so right between 6.4 and 7, and we can test that in the office with a salivary test, but what I like to do is have my patients go home and do their first void of urine in the morning and test that pH right there. Eye tests, cranial nerve tests, and cerebellum tests. We're also going to do metabolic tests. We're going to look at your blood sugar levels. We're going to look at your adrenal function cortisol levels, thyroid hormones, cerebellar antibodies, thyroid antibodies, female hormone panel, GI permeability tests, and immune panels. Now how is brain-based therapy different? Well, what we do with brain-based therapy is we're looking specifically at areas of the brain. So a normal brain function, what we see here, is the left brain communicating with the right brain. So we have is equal sides communicating, or what we call hemisphericity. As long as the cerebellum is receiving the proper amount of nerve input, there will be sufficient nerve input to both sides of the brain, to both lobes. But if the brain lobes are, then the brain will be able to send sufficient nerve input to the lower brain stem, which keeps part of the brain, the midbrain called the mesencephalon from overfiring. If this loop is lost that we see going on right here, then what we're going to see is an overfiring mesencephalon. And that's going to cause a problem. That's going to make you very susceptible to things like light, sound, crowds. Uh, you're going to end up experiencing more pain. And it's also going to mess up this entire loop going down to your cerebellum. And what that's going to do is that's going to cause you to have problems with balance and coordination. So if one side of the cerebellum is not receiving the proper amount of nerve input, it cannot send the proper amount of nerve input to the frontal lobe of the brain. The frontal lobe of the brain. The frontal lobe then can't send the proper amount of nerve input down to the lower brain stem in order to slow it down. So we've got to make sure that we have this normal functioning brain going on. Now, how do these things happen? How do you end up having problems in your brain? Chemical problems, poor thyroid function, physical problems, an accident, a sports injury, or emotional problems. Trauma causes a decrease in the brain's frequency of firing. It's kind of like a bunch of different wires that are not firing at the right time. There's a short circuit somewhere. Some of the symptoms resulting from a disruption in the brain's electrical vitality or a decreased frequency of firing, 
or an overactive midbrain. What we see is chronic pain, blurred vision, increased sweating, heart palpitations, irritable bowel syndrome, high blood pressure, and a few of the other ones here that I didn't get into. Now some of the symptoms resulting from a disruption in the brain's electrical vi vitality, other areas of brain's malfunction, what we have is episodes of depression or anxiety, difficulty adding or subtracting, loss of short-term memory, changes in handwriting, more irritable or angry. All of these different things that are going on that give us a good picture of what part of the brain is not functioning and what can we do in order to make them work properly again. Now when we see neurological treatment of treating the cerebellum and brain dysfunction, the things we want to look at are fuel. Your brain needs two things to survive. It needs fuel and activation. Fuel comes in the form of glucose and oxygen. Activation is going to come from input that you put into your body, so stimulation. It could be walking, moving, exercise, therapies. These are very important. What we do is unilateral or one-sided adjustment and brain-based rehabilitation. Now we have all of these things broken down and nothing is working well together. We want to make sure that we bring them all together so that you are functioning properly. Correcting the misfiring and bringing everything together so that we treat you as a whole person. Now what's, what's next? I only accept five new thyroid patients per month. The reason is, is because it takes a lot of time and effort to be able to come up with these plans for these patients and you don't want me working on 500 different people at the same time. So today I'm offering you, for, I'm offering you this. For the first two visits, it is $60. These visits usually cost over $450. The price is refundable if I feel that I can't help you, and I'll let you know that. So what I'll do is I'm going to do an examination on you, a comprehensive neurological examination. The cost will only be $60, and then the next two visits will be at no charge to you. I will give you my best recommendation, and in that best recommendation are the therapies that I plan on doing throughout the course of your treatment. You will have two visits to try those therapies out and decide if this is something you want to do but you've got to be committed. So visit one, what we see is a complete neurological evaluation, a review of your existing labs. If you have any labs, please bring them in. I will go over those with you. You have to fill out your metabolic assessment form and neurotransmitter form. You must be with your spouse or significant other. The reason why I say that and why this is so important is because if you came, especially on visit two for your report of findings, and I tell you something and you don't understand what I'm saying, this can get lost in translation when you try and go and explain this to your spouse. If your spouse had cancer or if they had any other major medical problem, you would be there for them. So all I'm asking is that you be there for them if they're coming in for a problem like a thyroid problem, because this is a major problem. And this needs the support, not just financially, but this needs the emotional support of the spouse. So. In the visit two, we're going to overview the, or further complete the testing. We're going to go over the treatment plan, a review of any kind of financial obligation, and you must be with your spouse or significant other. Now, I don't accept everybody as my patient. Everybody that walks in my door is not my patient. It has to be a fit. I have to want you as a patient, you have to want me as your doctor. Okay? I have three rules for acceptance of a case you must be willing to make a serious change in your life. You have to be willing to take accountability for your health. And insurance, Medicare, may only pay a small portion of your care. You have to be willing to make an investment in yourself and in your health. So, the things I want to ask you are on a scale of 1 to 10, how serious are you about your illness? Has this, how has this affected your, your relationships at work? your ability to enjoy life. Now, on a scale of one to 10, how serious are you about eliminating your illness, about recovering your thyroid? Now, due to time constraints, uh, I can only accept those who are truly committed. So think about this. If this is something that you're truly committed to, or if you're, when you're ready to truly commit, please give my office a call. It's area code 802. 230-4678. You can also visit our website 
at www.gethealthyvermont.com. Thank you, and if you have any further questions, please go ahead and write down my email address. It's drtager at gethealthyvermont.com. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to meeting you soon.